Okay, one second. Let's wait for that to work. Okay, here's Sam. And now a co host. Okay, hi guys. So we're here. We're basically ready to get started. Let me just go ahead and start sharing the presentation. I hope everyone has had a nice week since we last spoke. All right, guys. Welcome to English for Specific Purposes, week eight. So um, I'm very happy to see you all again. I recognize some familiar names. Of course, I don't know the faces, but I know the names. So for those who are coming back, welcome back. For those who it's your first time, welcome, welcome. This will be an hour and a half class tonight. And before we get started, we'll go over the class rules. So let's go ahead and start the rules. Oh, whoops, we'll start with introductions. I'm Ariella. My name is Ariella Knight. I'm the founder and CEO of the American Institute, which is an English school and cultural center based in Algiers. I'm originally from Boston, but I've lived in many parts of the United States, including Colorado and Washington, DC. I moved to Algiers in 2018, not 17, 2018. So that's uh, coming up on my four year anniversary here. Um, my professional background is as an English teacher, a program manager, and a business consultant. All right, so this class is called English for Specific Purposes. It is an online class offered in partnership with the U.S. Embassy, and we do one every week on Tuesdays. They take place from 6.30 to 8 p.m., and it's 10 weeks, although we actually have to update that because the embassy was so excited with the courses, they made it 12 weeks. It is completely free to attend and we have 500 spots in the class. We also record the class and post them later on YouTube. So people who don't join in the sessions can watch them later on YouTube. To all the YouTube viewers, hi out there. Um, I saw some people in the chat asking, is this the last class? What's the status? Okay, I know in the Zoom, it's telling you it's the last class. That's why you think it's the last one. I'm trying to update it right now. It should be updated soon. And next week, you can click the link the same as usual. Um, so we have tonight, English for Beauty and Fashion. Uh, and then our three uh, final classes, so that's weeks 10, 11, and 12, are all new because our 10th week class we had as a TBD, to be determined. Uh, and by voting, we decided that that class would be business English for negotiations, how to negotiate in a business environment, including things like negotiating salaries. And week 11 and 12 will both be academic English classes. So those are gonna focus specifically on writing. So the last three weeks are a little bit of a different vibe. They're business or academic. So tonight's class is actually the last time that we'll be talking about more kind of fun topics or topics not explicitly related to work or to school. So let's have fun. So as a reminder, here is how the class works. You can hear that I'm speaking a little quickly. That's because we are at an, an advanced intermediate level, also known as a B2. If it's a little too fast for you, I recommend that you watch the YouTube uh, recording afterwards. Um, and we won't be able to slow down for different levels, but we welcome everyone. And I, I, I was so proud last class when people were joining us on microphone, who said, you know, this is a little hard for my level, but I still want to try. I still want to learn. So for everyone who's not quite at advanced intermediate, marhaba bikum. Let's have a great class together. And uh, in the chat, you can also get some help from your classmates. So the class will run like this. Every week we have a different topic. For the majority of the class, we focus on specialized vocabulary. And this is because English for specific purposes is essentially learning unique vocabulary for different industries, environments, or situations. So a large majority of the class is learning vocabulary. There's also some skill development, and I'll also add here, sometimes there's cultural components. Okay, so you're also learning about a little bit about the culture of either Anglophone countries or sometimes specific to America, where, uh, where we're in the environment that we're, we're discussing. So tonight, 
beauty and fashion will definitely be a little bit related to my background as an American. Um, and then we also have guest interviews and we have a guest interview joining us tonight and I'm very excited for that. Um, we invite you to join in the chat. Where's the chat? Yes, we invite you guys to join in the chat, which you all see already. Um, I see, yep, you guys are in the chat, you're talking. Ines, thank you very much. Yes, I did try to look nice for our beauty conversation. I'll, I try to look nice for most classes, but for the beauty class, I thought, okay, I'd better try and, you know, do my hair. <laughs> so the chat, I don't see everything that's happening because I'm usually looking at the presentation, looking at you guys, but you can use it to interact with each other. And then a lot of times I will ask you a question and I will look to the chat specifically for your answers, okay? We have a Q&A box. I have to say, we do not really look at the Q&A box. I recommend you put everything in the chat. Even if I don't see it, Sam might see it. So you'll see I have a co-host here, that is Sam. He works with me at the American Institute. And if you ask a question like sending the link to the YouTube that someone just asked, he'll send it to you, okay? So questions, everything, put it in the chat. Um, there are two questions we get every week, and so I've just included their answers on this slide permanently. There is no certificate for this class, and yes, the class is recorded, and you can view the recordings on YouTube. I see other people asking for the recordings, so Sam can go ahead and send that link out again to the whole, uh, the whole class. Okay, we have some class rules like any classroom environment. Even though we're virtual, we want to make sure that everyone is abiding by the same rules and that we have the same expectations so we have a nice class together. So number one is respect and civility in the chat. Be respectful, be kind to each other, don't call each other names, things like this. Uh, be kind to me as well. Be nice and kind in general. I mean, it's a good rule for life, but definitely for the hour and a half we're together. Um, we don't tolerate any profanity. Profanity means swearing. Um, and no discussion of irrelevant topics, even if it's not an inappropriate topic, if it's not related to the class, we ask that you wait till the class is finished to chat about it. Please don't send links in the chat. If you send links in the chat, that's a very quick way to get kindly removed from the classroom. So Sam will be monitoring the chat and if he sees anything that's not related to the class or that's inappropriate, he will um, remove the participating parties. So. I don't want there to be any confusion. I want everyone to be able to enjoy your class. So just don't send links and we'll have a good time. Lastly, help create a fun and positive learning environment by participating and having a good time. Okay, are we all good? I see Sam replaced my all good dogs with a new all good dog, which I don't know, this dog troubles me because it looks like they tried to make him they put something in the jacket to make it look like it was full of something. Anyways, so today's agenda. Welcome to the class and to ESP. So we already did the introduction. We already reviewed the rules. This is what we're gonna be doing today. We have English for beauty and fashion. We'll be defining beauty. We'll be talking about clothing and vocabulary around clothing, specifically about style. Um, we'll be talking about makeup and cosmetics, a little, a little bit on grammar. We have some idioms and expressions, and then an interview with a New York City stylist. So let's get started. Here's more dogs in suits, <laughs> English for beauty and fashion. All right, guys, so we're going to actually start our conversation with a discussion. And the discussion means that you can join us on the microphone. We don't have to do the chat. I instantly want to get you guys involved in the class. So tell us, how do you define beauty? The way you participate is you raise your little mic hand, the little um, hand in, your, uh, in Zoom. And the people who have hands up, I will invite to come and speak. Okay, so the question is, how do you define beauty? I'm going to invite um, Ralia. Come on up. So you'll have to unmute your microphone. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. Yes, we can. I'm fine, thank you, and you? 
I'm doing well. Thank you for being the first one today. You're welcome. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving us this chance. Uh, I mean, you gave us an opportunity to learn many things like uh, free without any, you know. So I just want to thank you about this uh, opportunity. And for me, uh, beauty is everywhere. Like everyone is beautiful in his uh, own or her own. Uh, everyone is beautiful. There is no standards for beauty. There is no no limits or like, uh, uh, as I said, everyone is beautiful in his or her uh, own self. And <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I'm just a little bit stressed. No, oh, I love that. It's beautiful. It's a very open, um, inclusive definition of beauty. It's a great way to start us off. Thank you so much, Galia. Welcome. Okay, let's get someone else up here. How about Mohammed? Mohammed, are you here? Hello. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Fine, and you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you for uh, letting me this uh, opportunity. About uh, yeah, sure. question, I, I think. Uh, Beauty, it's a moral uh, uh, thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It would mean that's uh, what I see beauty. Maybe another, uh, don't say it's uh, the same. Okay, I'm not sure if I heard you. You said beauty is a moral thing? Yes. Uh, okay. I, yes. So what I would mean uh, that uh, we can uh, have a different uh, point of view in the same thing. Um, I see it mm. uh, beauty, another uh, say it's not. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, I I understand. It's um, it's it's individual what we find beautiful. Yes, you can say that. Okay. Thank you yes. so much, Mohammed. Thank you for your question. Of course. Thank you. Enjoy yes. the class. Yes. Let's go to Nasima. Hi. Hi, Nasima. How are you? Good. What about you? Thank you for having us. Of course. You're most welcome. Tell us Thank you so much. how, how okay. do you define beauty? Okay, so by defining beauty, I would like to, uh, to tell a quote that is, I'm so inspired by it. It is said, beauty is power, a smile is its sword. Okay, wow. Beauty is power and a smile is its sword. Wow. And do you believe this? Yeah, I do believe that a smile is beautiful. Especially when you draw it, you know, when you make some people so happy. Yeah, I think that's that's interesting that people have people can have a big reaction when they find something beautiful. They can their day can improve or they can have a really positive response. Exactly. It's so deeper than that. OK. All right. Well, amazing. Thank you, Nasima. Welcome to the class. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, thank you for starting us off immediately with some conversation. We're gonna have more opportunities in the future, but I want us to just move to the definition we have of beauty. So, well, before I actually, I wanna go back. Before I show you and we read the definition, I just wanna acknowledge that beauty is one of those things that's really, really hard to define. We have an expression in English, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, meaning, Similar to what Muhammad said, beauty, what I think is beautiful is not what you think is beautiful, is not what Sam thinks is beautiful, is not what Nasima thinks is beautiful. So it's interesting that we have um, beauty standards and we recognize there are things that as a group we think are beautiful. But when we discuss the definition of beauty, we understand actually 
beauty is not just one thing. So beauty can be very different for different people. But at the same time, we have something called beauty standards. So let's start with the definition of beauty. Beauty is a set of standards that define characteristics and features pleasing to the eye. Okay, so it's a set of standards, meaning it's, it's a list of things, of a list of characteristics or features that collectively we've decided are pleasing to us. Okay. Hold on, before we move on from beauty, what do you guys think? Do you agree with this definition of beauty? Buddha says yes. Okay. Okay, you guys are agreeing. Mm -hmm. It's a big, okay, Faisal says everyone sees himself as beautiful. I saw you guys had some, had some definitions earlier on. Easy on the eyes, eyes of the beholder. It's interesting because when we talk about beauty, we often talk about inner beauty and outer beauty. And in fact, we can say that something, we, we find a quality beautiful. So when someone is generous, we can say, I find that beautiful. When someone is kind, we say, oh, that person is so beautiful because of their kindness. But in the definition of beauty, we are talking about things that we see. We are talking about things that please what we are looking at, the visual content. It's not limited, but it does include really things that we see. So we cannot see kindness. We cannot see generosity. However, when someone is generous, it can shift how we see them. It can change what we find beautiful because we know them. I think we can all say that we love our moms and that love shows through our eyes that we think our moms are so beautiful, right? And we understand someone else may not find our moms beautiful because they don't have that love. So even though beauty is about seeing, it does include things that influence how we see. All right. Okay, we're moving on because our beauty and fashion class, we're going to look specifically at two elements in beauty and fashion. One is a uh, style way of dressing and the other is makeup but the majority actually is on style and i'm really excited about it okay so my question for oh my question for you guys is do you think the way you dress reflects your personality do you think the way you dress the clothing you wear reflects your personality Okay, and this is another time you guys can come and speak on the microphone. So I see some people have hands up still. If your hand is up for the last question, but you don't want to answer this one, put your hand down. Uh, if you want to answer this one, put it back up. And let's start with Lena. Hi. Lena, you have to. Oh, you're here. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Thank you for trusting me again. <laughs> Oh my God! Of Thank course. you so much. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping everyone speaks tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, oh, the way we do now. Go ahead. I, I'm good. How about you? Sorry, maybe the connection. I'm I can hear you. Uh, you know the connection. It's okay. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be quiet. You talk. Okay. So uh, I think the way we dress uh, reflects into our percent. No, maybe sometimes, you know, uh, when I am uh, dressed classic, that's the mood, but I want to dress classic. Sometimes I want to like uh, dress like a pop. When I uh, like uh, feel comfortable and uh, I think the way the dress is 50 person. I think that so. Isn't when we say um, like the, this person is wearing classic isn't is gentleman? No, I don't think that. So when I I um, uh, do something uh, good or uh, do uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, it's uh, it's about the mood of the person. Sometimes when I wake up. Uh, I wanted to dress uh, some comfortable or something like strong, powerful woman, and to feel like I am. This is my day. 
I wanted to show everyone the power of me. <laughs> so isn't, isn't, isn't. So maybe it's a 50 person. I think that maybe, maybe. Hey. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Lina. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you so much. I love this class and I want to everyone uh, join with us. And I hope next year we do that. And thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. That's so sweet. OK. Oops. I just wanted to comment on a few things that you said, Lena. But since we had a delay, I waited, which is really interesting because Lena is drawing a, a difference between personality and mood. And she's saying perhaps 50% of the uh, way you dress maybe is about your personality, but the other 50% is about your mood. And if you have a completely, uh, you know, the mood of waking up as I'm a superhero, I'm superwoman, I'm powerful today, that maybe you'll dress completely different than the next day if you wake up with a different mood. Uh, do you guys agree? Do you think that with uh, the way you dress is connected to your mood more than your personality? Let's have someone else up here. How about Huda? Come on up, Huda. Hi. Hello, how are you? Fine, Ariel lines you. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm doing well. So welcome. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Thank you. So for uh, how, how I think uh, the way you dress reflect your personality, I don't think so. I think like uh, I, uh, the dress reflect your mood exactly because for me, when I'm uh, hmm. uh, sad or I'm uh, not, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I wear uh, very bad wear. So it's not my personality. Okay. <laughs> So I uh, I wear a big size, okay. very, very big size, or uh, I don't know. So I don't think dress uh, reflect personality. I don't think so. It's why. Okay, thank you. Thank you for you. Okay, thank you, Huda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Um, so what Huda is saying is agreeing, actually, um, saying it has very little to do with personality. It's almost completely mood. And I think, Huda, what you were also saying was, don't judge my personality when I dress bad or when I don't dress very beautifully. It just means I'm having a bad day. I think we can all relate to that when we get out of bed and we don't love what we're wearing or just we don't love how we look that day. We don't want people to make assumptions about our entire personality. Um, but I don't know, is there anyone who agrees it has something to do with personality? What about people who wear you know, really the same style of clothes all the time. What about someone who only wears all black clothing? Well, maybe, maybe that's always their mood or maybe that's just something they find beautiful. It's not their personality. Is the dress wearing you or are you wearing the dress? That's actually a common phrase that we have when we put on something that's just very, um, maybe a bright color or very intense. And we say, are you wearing the dress or is the dress wearing you? Okay. Anyways, thank you guys for participating. We're going to have more discussion times. Let's go to the next part. We're actually going to start learning some vocabulary. So first let's start with the definition of clothing. So the clothing industry is a thriving industry that deals with clothing, including ready to wear, meaning something you put on jeans and a t-shirt, tailored, which is like suits, blazers, and haute couture, which is very fancy, very formal, like fashion runways. Clothing can also be known as apparel or garments. These tend to be more technical terms for clothing. So we the lay people, the people who don't work in the industry call it clothing. So clothing is something that all people, all ages, all sizes, all genders wear 
where we are wearing clothing essentially all the time, whether we're in the house or outside of the house. So it's something that we all need to know about. Learning English as it relates to clothing and fashion is not just for people working in fashion, even though we'll be talking with someone working in fashion later today for the interview. This is something that we all need vocabularies for. So I'm assuming you guys have a kind of basic level of vocabulary on clothing. So today we're gonna to be talking about styles of clothing and trying to teach more specific vocab. So it'll be a bit of a test and we'll see if you guys can start to identify some of this more specific high level clothing vocabulary. Okay. First, we're gonna talk about different types of clothing. So we have, I believe three. So the first one is called casual wear. You'll notice we don't say casual clothing, we say casual wear. This is a bit of a formality. It's just the way we talk about clothing when we're talking about the industry of clothing. So now we're speaking a little bit like we're fashion designers and we say, mm, I like to design casual wear, all right? And in this example, wear is a noun. Okay, but we really don't use it as a noun outside of this specific context. Anyways, casual wear, also known as street wear. This is relaxed, it's comfortable, spontaneous, meaning you don't plan your outfit, you just throw it on. It's informal and it's everyday. So we have outfits here on celebrities that are relatively casual, t-shirts, flip-flops, jeans, okay? Next, we have sportswear. This is also called active wear. Okay, this is what we wear when we're doing sports. Uh, sometimes it looks more kind of, I, would, I wanna say polished, like the example of the man on the left, where he's obviously you know, a model advertising the clothes. And then you see other people actually wearing the clothes and see what they're designed. They're designed for movement. They're designed for sweating. They're designed for, for, we'd say, heavy use, okay? They won't break the second you start running in them or maybe you're rock climbing or doing something very active. So this is sportswear or active wear. Lastly, we have business attire. So this is clothing worn for work purposes and it gets to be much more formal. So this is jackets and pants and belts and fancy formal dresses and tops, etc. Okay, and then last we have formal wear. Formal wear is clothing that you wear to events, special occasions like weddings. Okay, it's also the type of clothes that celebrities wear on red carpets. All right, so we have the four different types of clothing. We have casual wear, sports wear, business attire, and formal wear. I do not know why we don't say business wear, but we don't. We usually say business attire. Okay, now we're moving on to style. So the definition of style in the fashion world, style is usually short for personal style. Okay, we say style, but we're talking about an individual style. And the definition is the way an individual expresses themselves through aesthetic choices. Aesthetic meaning things that we see. So the colors they wear, the fabric they wear, the way they wear something, if they wear really big clothes, really small clothes, these are things called aesthetic choices. Um, it includes clothing, accessories, hairstyle, and the way they put an outfit together, okay? Aesthetic is one of these words that's very unusual, and it does not have many uh, common other words in English. So I'm going to say it again so you can hear. We pronounce it aesthetic. Okay, like the letter S and then thetic. Okay, aesthetic choices. Today we're all becoming a little bit of uh, fashion industry specialists. So there are many different ways to describe styles, and new styles are always being invented. So anytime celebrities go out and start wearing clothing in a new way or a fashion uh, designer 
puts out a new style of clothing, uh, the, the newspapers or the journalists will instantly say, the new style this year is, and they give it a name. Okay, so the styles we're going to talk about today are kind of considered more classic. They've been around for a long time, but there are so many, so many more styles. So when you're looking to describe your personal style, you don't have to find it in just these big categories we give you today. But I want, at the end of this discussion, I'm going to ask you guys what your personal style is. So start thinking about that. And those who want to come on mic and share, be prepared to explain your personal style. So we're going to start with classic style. Okay. Classic style. This is a style that has what we call timeless looks. So someone can wear the outfit today that their father wore 30 years ago, that their grandfather wore 60 years ago, and it still looks good. We call this a class, uh, sorry, a timeless look because time does not affect if it's stylish. It usually has simple cut, meaning the way the fabric is, the way the sewing is, it's basic, but elegant. And it's fine fabrics, meaning usually very nice quality. So silks, um, high quality cotton or linen, matching accessories like leather shoes and handbags. So now I'm going to see if you guys can guess the classic style clothing vocabulary. This is going to be written in the chat. Can someone tell me what these are called? And I, I'll give you a hint. It's not shoes. It's something more specific. These are shoes, as you can see, but these are a classic style of shoe. Do you guys know what we would call these? Okay, someone says classic shoes. Someone says leather shoes. These are both true. Anyone else wanna take a guess? Oxford, Suad, very good. Boot, mm, I wouldn't call this a boot. Classic shoes. Any more guesses? There's one guess I'm waiting for. Okay, I'll show you guys. We call these dress shoes. Formal shoes, we call dress shoes. We actually, in English, we don't call them classic shoes. It makes sense. It's logical. Like I remember when I came to Algeria and someone said, uh, a friend said, I'm looking for classic shoes. And I thought, what's a classic shoe? Because to us, classic can be many things. Then they explained it to me and I said, oh, you mean a dress shoe as in a formal shoe. Uh, but we also would call this specific kind of dress shoe Oxfords because of the way they have the little tie. All right, let's try again. What would we call this? You guys know I'm looking for a very specific answer this time. Michael Jackson shoes and babouche. <laughs> I don't think, uh... oh, I see a Maghrebian's classic shoe is a babouche. Okay, very good. What is this, you guys? Do we have any guesses for what I have on the screen? Yes, it's a shirt. What kind of shirt? Okay, someone wrote suit. Yeah, it's a suit shirt because a suit, of course, includes the whole thing. Classic shirt, button down shirt. That's very good, Fatima Zora. I wasn't thinking that, but you, you could also say button down shirt. Wedding shirt. Yeah, okay, you'd wear it to a wedding. Classic buttony men's. I'm going to give you guys a big hint. It has to do with the piece of the shirt that's right here. Lydia got it. Very good, Lydia. This is called a collared shirt. Okay, because it has this little thing, which is what we call a collar. So when people want to go into a formal occasion, they always need a collared shirt. But Fatima Zora, you also get points because we also call these button downs. We either call them collared shirts or button downs. Nadir, we would not call this a work shirt. A work shirt is something we picture like 
uh, a construction worker or someone who works outside, a shirt you can get dirty. This is a little bit the opposite of a work shirt. Okay, what is this one? This is a little bit easier. It's not so crazy. Okay, I see suit. Okay, suit includes the top and the bottom. So it's not a suit. Hajar and Nasima and Suad, you got it. It's a blazer. Very good. There's nothing specific to this one. It's just a blazer. All right, what about these? I have two answers I will accept for these. Do I? Heels, Nasima, high heels. I see a lot of women coming in. <laughs> Lydia, Louisa, good. Heels slash high heels. So clearly you guys know that you can use either. You can either say heels or high heels. Okay, very good. What about this? This, I hope you can see. I wonder if I should try to zoom. Oh, well, let me zoom because it's a specific, yeah, I think, okay. Oh, Louisa, good job. I didn't think you guys would get it. So it's not a dress. I think it's because it's a very small picture. It's a coat. And more than that, it's a specific kind of coat. Kauter also got it. This is what we call a trench coat. And it's a very, very classic style of coat that's usually made of a nylon. It's a specific kind of thin uh, fabric that makes noise like when you rub it. Okay, and what is this? Don't think too hard, this one is basic. Bag, bag, yeah, leather bag. I wanted to specify that it's leather because in the classic style, they really often use leather. I saw someone say, what does that trench mean? So I don't know why this is called a trench coat because a trench is actually like a, a tunnel that you dig in wartime. They say you are in the trenches when you're hit like below ground peeking over and you're looking with your gun or your binoculars and the place you're in is a trench. I wouldn't think about the definition of trench with trench coat, just use it because I'm sure there's some history that I don't know about that connected the two, but for now they're not connected. Okay, and what is this? Don't think too hard, nothing fancy for this one. Maybe give me the material. Boot, boot, what kind of boot? Hajar, yes. And Fatma, leather boots. Well, technically it's one boot, but the idea is it would be two leather boots. Okay, so this all together, this is a kind of classic style look. You see basics, you see formal wear, you see leather. Here are some celebrities that I found wearing classic style clothing. Do you guys know these celebrities by any chance? Who can name one of them? Prince Harry, I think he's the most obvious. So classic style, right? He's wearing a collared shirt. He's wearing a full suit. He has a leather jacket. He's wearing some nice Oxfords. Anyone else know? Oh, someone said Amel Clooney, Fatma Zora. Yes, this is Amel over here on the right. So she's wearing essentially a, what we call a skirt suit because it has a matching uh, blazer and a matching skirt. And she has a leather bag and she's wearing high heels. Very good. Does anyone know? Yeah, Lydia said Carly Kloss. I think it's Carly Kloss as well. I also was not sure, um, but she's wearing uh, a kind of a trench coat. I would actually call this a pea coat. I'm not sure if that uh, is actually the case, but this is a very common other type of formal coat with boots and kind of a simple outfit. Okay, that is classic style. We're gonna move on to our next style, which is Preppy. So preppy style, this is clothing that's actually associated with what we call preparatory schools. So it's clothing that looks like prep school uniforms. Uh, we call this a crisp and put together aesthetic. Put together means very clean. Um, it has bright colors, it has pastel colors, lots of patterns. Um, and it's, it has those, those collared shirts, khakis, which we'll see in the next slide. 
All right, preppy style, you guys. This is a really, really, really hard one. And I don't want you to feel bad if you don't know this. There's two things that I wanna know. One is the pattern and the other is, okay, good, the word. So Spatimosaurus says it's a sweater. Yes, it's a sweater, but it has no, no arms. Does anyone know what we call a sweater with no arms? It's a sweater. <laughs> I'm seeing armless sweater, sleeveless, non-sleeve. We call it a sweater vest. And this is something that's very preppy. You don't see it a lot. Um, it's really commonly seen on people from this preppy style. And the first word here is argyle. Okay, argyle is the pattern. It's like big diamonds. You can see there's two patterns of diamonds. There's a light gray one, light gray and white in the back, and then the big crossover diamond. We call that argyle or argyle. You can hear it pronounced both ways. Okay, that was a really hard one. Let's see what's next. Oh, this is easy. This is the same as we had before. We have a sweater vest and we have a blazer. Very good. Very good. Okay. Oh no, it's the wrong order. Oh no. Okay. Where's the school bag? Okay. Ignore school bag because the picture is not showing up, but we have what again, what is this? Leather shoes and leather boots. Okay. So preppy and classic have some things in common. Let's see if my satchel, okay. My satchel is not coming up. These are a very preppy shoe that I do not think you guys have, uh, have heard of. Has anyone seen or heard the name for this kind of shoe? Moccasins? Yeah, actually, sometimes we do call these moccasins. That's actually really good. I hadn't thought about that. But when they're like in a, in a very preppy outfit, we call these boat shoes. I don't know if at one point they were traditionally used on boats, but nowadays we call them boat shoes. What about this? What is this? A skirt, very good. Someone says a pleated skirt, that's good. I was actually looking for the pattern. The pattern is mm, Fatmazora, good job, plaid. We call this plaid skirt. Plaid is this pattern of different uh, little lines crossing over each other. Good. What about this? You guys have probably seen this in, in different TV shows. Okay, Shahnez says, this looks like a school skirt. That's exactly the preppy style, Shahnez. Preppy is all about like looking like a school uniform. Okay, Lydia said jock jacket. That's really, really close. That's really close. And bomber jacket actually is also close. We call this a letterman jacket. It's a jacket that the jocks wear when they get, I don't know, the football team. And it usually has their letter on it, like a big W. So we call it a letterman jacket. And what about these? Trousers, pants, good. There's a very specific word I'm looking for that has to do with the color. Does anyone know it? They are classic pants, yes. We call these khaki, khaki pants or khakis. Okay, good. And last thing, we already know this is a collared shirt. And then finally, the school bag satchel shows up. So this is a bag that we call a school bag because it's what they used to use for school um, or also a satchel. So let me show you guys how this all comes together. This is preppy style. I only found one celebrity. So then I just took a picture of uh, models, basically modeling the preppy style. Have you guys seen this style before? Does this look familiar to you? 
Yeah, Victoria Beckham, exactly. You can see she has on an Argyle sweater. I think if you've seen uh, Gossip Girl, yeah, if you've ever seen a TV show that has high schoolers in it, usually the sort of mean kids or bullies wear preppy style clothes. Yeah, Blair Waldorf, we often associate preppy style with being wealthy because prep schools are private schools, so they cost money. So this style is a little bit of a wealthy style, although anyone can wear it now. You can recreate it as an adult, but that's the history of the style. It's a kind of elitist. Okay, cool. Number three, we have Gothic style. Really different direction from preppy. So Gothic style is distinguished by darkness, mystery, uh, elegant wardrobe pieces, smoky makeup. It comes from a desire to stand out in a society considered conformist. So they really wanna look different. Like I don't do anything you do. I don't dress any way you do. Um, there's a desire, uh, oh, sorry. There's a, the, the Gothic fashion is actually um, associated with the 18th century. So when they're using um, velvet, lace, leather, corsets, gloves, they're referencing an old period, also known as the Gothic period. Um, and you can see a lot of black hair or black fingernails. Okay. So I'm gonna speed this up because we're running short on time. So I'm gonna show you all of these and we won't have as much guessing. These, I called them wide-legged pants, okay? Black with lots of kind of zippers and chains. These are platform boots, platform because they have a big bottom. Um, and these are really in fashion. I mean, everyone is wearing platform boots or, or Doc Martens right now, but you can see that that's partly referencing goth style. Black lipstick. Another, another style of trench coat. Here we have a lace dress with a corset. So you can see the corset right around the waist of the dress. And then we have what are called fishnet tights. So everything is black. Everything seems to have attitude. I see you guys writing like Matrix style or Avril Lavigne style or any sort of like death metal band often has some goth influence in them. Here are some pictures I found of goth style. So the middle person is not a celebrity. I just could not find a guy on the internet looking goth. But the other two are actual well-known celebrities. So you can see Rihanna, she's not goth, but she decided to dress in the goth style. So you don't have to always look like super intense. She's just wearing the black lipstick. She's wearing a kind of silver chain or choker and then a black outfit with the sort of play on the gloves. Um, and then we have Billie Eilish who often has a sort of goth, goth aesthetic or used to have a goth aesthetic. And then this guy in the middle who yes, does look quite scary, <laughs> but he's got the dyed black hair. He's wearing black eye makeup and everything else black. Okay, our last style that we're, oh no, we have two more styles. So we have bohemian or boho chic. Uh, bohemian, this is related to hippie fashion. Hippies was a movement that came through the US and the rest of the world in the 1960s and 1970s. It's everything natural, natural fabric. So a lot of kind of um, woven materials, traditional materials, uh, old fashioned patterns. It has a lot of warm colors, reds, oranges, beige, and very bold accessories. So big earrings, lots of bracelets. Um, we would call it maximalism, like more is more is more. So for bohemian style, we have long and flowy skirts, as you can see in bold patterns. We have two different versions here of what we call boho bags. So even the, the style, the, the definition or the name of the bag itself, we, we call it boho. That's our way of describing the bag. And then we say, uh, okay, this is a crochet cardigan. Crochet is that style of knitting. 
This is a boho knit sweater. This would be worn by a man. Someone says it looks Native American or it looks kind of like indigenous. And a lot of the reference is from that. These are called bangles when you have lots of bracelets on your wrist. And then we have here some boho sandals. So you can see lots of different colors, lots of natural fabrics, and it's kind of loud and busy as a style. So these are some examples of boho chic. No celebrities. I couldn't find celebrities, but you can see everyone's wearing a lot of colors, a lot of material, a lot of flow, different fabrics, different patterns. And it just sort of exudes a very natural, relaxed attitude. Like I am here living my best life, enjoying things, just relaxing. Okay. And the last one, yes, yeah, someone is saying it's not our style in Algeria. It's true. I don't often see people in Algeria in boho chic, but you will see this in the U S especially in like the West in California, people are just there to have a good time. And it's a, a much more casual style boho chic. Then we have casual chic. So this is semi-informal. So it combines elegant items like nice pants or tailored shirts or a suit with not dressy items like kind of normal jackets, jeans, sneakers. So these are casual chic items. We have jeans, we have white sneakers, we have a leather belt. We have a cashmere sweater. Those are both more formal items, nicer items. A blouse is more formal. It's not a t-shirt. And then we have the leather belt and we have a summer jacket. That's, it's not a blazer, it's less formal. So you have a kind of combination of formal and informal items. Here are some different people wearing casual chic. This, I think I see a lot everywhere. I see it in Algeria and I see it in America. Um, it's, you know, this guy in the middle, he's wearing a kind of formal outfit, but he's rolled his shirt sleeves up. There's no blazer and he's wearing sneakers. Okay, so he's sort of dressed his, his formal style down. The girl on the left, it's similar. She's wearing really nice fabrics, some nice knitted items. She has some jewelry. She has a nice bag, but she's wearing it with white sneakers as well. And she doesn't have like a fancy cut. The sweater is very big and bulky, which makes it less formal. And then over here on the right, she's got jeans and a t-shirt, but then she has a very nice coat on top and nice shoes and hat. So it's, an, it's a choice which part of the outfit you make casual and which part of the outfit you make formal. Okay, you guys, before our guest joins us, we have just a few minutes for you all to come on microphone. How would you describe your style? All right, let me get you guys back up here. I can see who's raising their hand. If you were... Um, already participating and I forgot, I'm going to try to get new names, but if you guys have already gone, thank you for putting your hand down so we can call on some other folks. Okay, let's start with Celia. Celia, come and tell us how would you describe your style? Hi. Hi, Celia. How are you? Uh, great. How are you, Ayala? Doing well, thank you. Thank, thank God. So, uh, how, so, how would you describe your style, Celia? Are you gothic style? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, usually, I'm uh, I'm a classic uh, girl because of uh, my work and uh, the meetings. Also. Mm -hmm. uh, I also go for the casual when I go out with friends or uh, visit my family or um. and when I'm not on a good mood, I'm completely in with the hippie style. Okay. So that is that kind of like what you wear when you want to feel better or it's what you wear when you just don't care. So anything comes on. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
so if you if you see me with the hippie uh, style don't talk to me <laughs> <laughs> I'll, come, i'll come give you a hug and we won't speak <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> Okay, thank you so much Celia. Thank, thank you, you so much Ayala. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye. Let's call up someone else. What about Faisal? Faisal, are you here? Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. And you, Ayala? Doing well. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you too. <clears throat> What's what's what I dress depends on where I go. Mm -hmm. When I go to a wedding, of course I will dress casual things. When I go out with my friends, I dress normal clothes like uh, chic style you said or something like that. Okay. That's all. Okay. So I, I heard you say when you go to weddings you dress casual, but I think you meant you dress uh, for, formal, formal, formal. Yes, formal. yes, yes. I thought hmm, he's casual at weddings, but formal with friends. I did. <laughs> I did the mistake. Yes. <laughs> no, that's okay. That makes perfect sense. Thanks, Ariella. Okay. Very cool. Thank you so much, Faisal. Thanks for sharing. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay, what about Layla? Layla, tell us what about your style? Oops. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, and you, Ariela? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, the first time uh, I participate uh, with you. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I am a, I am now in in uh, in foreign uh, uh, foreign uh, country. I am not in Algeria. Where are uh, you? I am from France. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for this class. Of It's, course. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Very good. Uh, tell us, Layla, how do you describe your style? Uh, my style is a casual uh, style. Okay. Generally, I yeah, I put uh, a uh, I put a uh, casual uh, style okay. because uh, it is uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, move and uh, uh, and take transport and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. For uh, the work or uh, for the uh, for uh, different uh, case. Definitely, I I was going to tell you it's definitely not comfortable walking in high heels. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what some women say, you can get used to it, but it's not the same as walking in yeah the yeah but the, uh, it is not uh, all the time absolutely yeah well thank you so much Layla and thanks for joining us from France thank you okay thank you. Well, bye you. enjoy thank the class you. bye um but you guys thanks for coming and I love the chat you look good if you feel good anyways It's always a pleasure and I will see you next Tuesday night for English, business English for negotiations. Good night, everyone.